Mechanics 1, P42, November 2021. First question. The diagram shows a velocity time graph which models the motion of a car. The graph consists of a six straight line segments. The car accelerates from rest to speed of 20 meters per second over a period of 5 seconds. So the first acceleration, first 5 seconds is given to attain the speed of 20 meters per second and then travels at this speed for further 20 seconds. Further 20 seconds. The car then decelerates to a speed of 6 meters per second. Here it comes down, decelerates over a period of 5 seconds. This, period, uh, this speed is maintained for further t minus 30 seconds. The car then accelerates again to a speed of 20 meters per second. Again it comes up over a period of 50 minus t before decelerating to rest over a period of 10 seconds. So this is the last 10 seconds it decelerates. So given that during the two stages of the motion, when the car is accelerating, the accelerations are equal, find the value of t. So given the accelerations are equal in two stages, so let us find uh, the value of t. So for the first stage, acceleration, the gradient is given by, or the uh, acceleration is given by the gradient. So now look at the points from the origin 0, 0 to the first 5 seconds it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second the coordinates of the point are 5 comma 20 so using the two point form the gradient uh, is given by y2 minus y1 gradient is x2 minus x1 so using that 20 minus 0 over 5 minus 0 gives 20 over 5 that is 4 so the acceleration in the first stage is 4 meters per second square. When for the second stage, for the second stage, the acceleration from here it starts. So this is t comma 6 and this reaches here this second stage of acceleration. The points are 50 comma 20. So using the same formula, you get 20 minus 6 over 50 minus t equal to 14 over 50 minus t. But given the accelerations are equal in these two stages, so that gives a1 equal to a2. So that's, that gives 4 is equal to 14 over 50 minus t. So when you cross multiply and rearrange the terms, you get 50 minus t equal to 14 over 4 that gives 50 minus t equal to 7 over 2 therefore t is equal to 50 minus 7 over 2 that is 93 over 2 that is 46.5 seconds and find the total distance traveled by the car during the motion now we have drawn the diagram once again so distance is nothing but area under the curve or below the curve so the total uh, graph or the diagram is divided into uh, one first triangle then a rectangle then a trapezium then a rectangle another trapezium and a triangle so six parts <coughs> so let us find uh, the area of all these six parts so area of the first triangle then rectangle then trapezium then again rectangle then trapezium and triangle so uh, area of the first um, triangle half times base times height gives half times 5 times 20 and the rectangle is 20, 25 minus uh, 5 this is 20 and the height is 20 so 20 by 20 plus next to trapezium half times 25 to 30 the distance between the parallel lines is 5 so this 5 and some of the parallel lines is 20 plus 6 the next one is rectangle that is uh, we have found the value of t <coughs> we can use that 46.5 so t is 46.5 so this distance t minus 30 that is 46.5 minus 30 is 16.5 so the height is 6 so 6 times 
16.5 that's area of the rectangle then gives uh, trapezium so half times 3.5 times 20 plus 6 then last one triangle half times base times height this is 10 times 20 so when you simplify you get 50 plus 400 plus 65 plus 99 plus 45.5 plus 100 so when you sum up you get 759.5 meters so that's the total distance traveled by the car then question number two a van of mass 3600 kilogram is towing a trailer of mass 1200 kilograms along a straight horizontal road using a light horizontal rope there are resistance forces of 700 newtons on the van so for the van 700 this is van and this is a trailer here behind and 300 newtons on the trailer so that's the resistance force which acts always in the opposite direction so driving force goes this way forward so this resistance force is in the opposite direction so applying newton's second law force equal to mass times acceleration for van you get the driving force is 2500 minus the resistance force is 700 minus the tension in the rope equal to ma that is 3600 times a and for the trailer there is no driving force but instead the tension is in the forward direction so t minus the um, resistance force on the trailer is 300 given is equal to mass times acceleration gives 1200 times a that's equation 2 name this is two equations is 1 and 2 then for the whole system for the whole system driving force minus the total resistance force 700 and 300 so 700 minus 300 equal to total mass of the system is 300 3600 plus 1200 times a so that gives 1500 is equal to 4800 times a so which gives a is equal to 1500 over 4800 you can bring this move it to the left side so over 4800 that gives 0 0.3125 so therefore acceleration is 0 0.3125 uh, we can find the tension by substituting this value of acceleration in one of the uh, two equations second equation is simple we can substitute in the second equation so t is equal to 1200 times this is the second equation so 1200 times acceleration that is 0 0.3125 plus 300 so move this negative 300 to right side becomes plus 300 so when you simplify you get tension in the uh, tow bar is 675 newtons and b part of the question the driving force is now removed driving force is now removed and the van driver applies a braking force which acts only on the van the resistance force remains unchanged so find the least possible value of the braking force which will cause the rope to become slack so look at the, the diagram now there is no driving force so driving force removed braking force applied therefore t equal to 0 now because uh, there is no driving force moving the van in the forward direction so now tension becomes 0 so for van what are the forces now the um, the resistance force minus fb oh sorry the braking force uh, braking force which acts in the opposite direction braking force so minus the negative because it acts in the opposite direction uh, to the uh, driving force which is not there so therefore negative sign n minus fb the braking force minus uh, the resistance force of the van on the van equal to mass of the van that is 3600 times acceleration and for the trailer there is no braking force because that's only applied on the van therefore only the force on the trailer now is the resistance force that is negative 300 equal to 1200 times a that is mass times acceleration so name these two equations as 1 and 2 and from 2 a is equal to 
you move this 1200 to left side you get negative 300 over 1200 that gives negative 1 over 4 or in decimal equivalent it is uh, negative 0 0.25 meters per second square that's your acceleration to get uh, value of uh, the uh, breaking force you substitute this value of a in 1 you get uh, breaking force is equal to you move this to right side and this to left side and substitute the value for a so negative 700 negative 3600 times acceleration is negative now negative 0 0.25 so that gives negative 700 plus 900 that gives plus 200 newtons so breaking force is 200 newtons now or you can apply for the whole system you can do it the other way also for the whole system uh, the forces are negative breaking force breaking force which is negative fb uh, minus the resistance on van minus resistance force acting on the trailer equal to the total mass of the system that is 4800 and times acceleration so that also gives you the driving uh, braking force is equal to negative 1000 negative 4800 times negative 0 0.25 which gives the braking force is 200 newtons and question number three the diagram shows a semicircular track ABC of radius 1.8 meters which is fixed in a vertical plan, plane. Sorry. Uh, the points A and C are at the same horizontal level. A and C are at the same horizontal level. And the point B is at the bottom of the track here. Uh, the section AB is smooth. So this is smooth. And the section BC is rough. So this is rough. A small block is released from rest at A. Show that the speed of the block at B is 6 meters per second. So using energy principle, loss in potential energy is equal to gain in kinetic energy. So that is the formula for potential energy to find potential energy is mgh. And for kinetic energy the formula is half mb square. And so mass you can cancel that. So you get gh equal to half v square substitute g, g here is 10 and h is 1.8 uh, because the height is given here 1.8 that's the radius which is nothing but the height so 10 times 1.8 equal to half times v square so v square gives when you simplify uh, to move to two left side so 20 times 1.8 that is 36 so therefore v is equal to 6 meters per second that is speed of the block at b is 6 meters per second and B part, the block comes to rest, instantaneous rest, uh, comes to instantaneous rest for the first time at a height of 1.2 meters above the level of B. The work done against the resistance force during the motion of the block from B to this point is 4.5 joules. So block moving from B to C, BC is rough given, BC is rough and the block is moving from B to C then by energy principle kinetic energy lost is equal to gain in potential energy plus work done against resistance so substitute the formula for kinetic energy and uh, potential energy half mv square equal to mgh plus 4.5 so half times m times v just now we have some found in part 8 is 6 equal to m times g is h times 10 so sorry g is 10 so m times 10 times h is 1.2 so times 1.2 plus the resistance work done against resistance is given 4.5 joules so you can write 4.5 so that further you can simplify you get 18 m equal to 12 m plus 4.5 that gives 6 m is equal to 4.5 therefore m is equal to 0 0.75 kilograms that is mass of the block is 0 0.75 kilograms question number four a cyclist starts from rest at a point a and travels along a straight road a b coming to rest at b the displacement of the cyclist from a at time t seconds after the start is s meters where s is equal to 0 0.004 times 75 t square minus t cube show that the distance ab is 250 meters 
So S is given, S is equal to 0 0.04 times 75 t square minus t cube. That is an expression in terms of t. Now a v is um, given by the ds by dt, the first derivative v is equal to ds over dt. So let us differentiate this function with respect to time t. So we get ds over dt is equal to 0 0.004 times then you differentiate um, these two terms you get 75 t square becomes 150 t minus t cube becomes 3 t square because when y is equal to x power n then dy by dx is n times x power n minus 1 so use that principle uh, rule differentiation rule you can differentiating t square becomes 2 t so 2 times 75 is 150 t uh, and t cube is 3 times t square that is the notation for ds over dt is v velocity so v equal to 0 0.04 times 150t minus 3t square now, now it becomes um, equate v equal to 0 um, because given the cyclist starts from rest at point A and along a straight road AB coming to rest at B so v equal to 0 gives 150t minus 3t square equal to 0 because this is a constant so it cannot be 0 therefore only the expression with t becomes 0 the second factor and that gives take 3t as a common factor from these two terms you get 3t times 50t minus t equal to 0 so when product of terms is 0 each factor can be 0 so that gives t equal to 0 or 50 minus t equal to 0 that gives t equal to 50 so when t equal to 50 t equal to 0 means the particle is at rest so starts from rest at a but, uh, we need to find uh, a b so we have to find the value of t consider t equal to 50 the next second value so when t is 50 substitute uh, the value of t in s yes, the given expression 0 0.004 times 75 times t square becomes 50 square minus t cube becomes 50 cube so that uh, when you simplify you get 0 0.004 times 62500 that gives 250 meters so distance ab is given by 250 meters and b part find the maximum velocity of the cyclist so take uh, the expression we just found in part A for velocity that is after differentiating the S with respect to time t we got V equal to 0 0.004 times 150 times t minus 3 t square and maximum velocity the word maximum is related to the function velocity. So differentiating this V velocity with respect to time t you get dV by dt is equal to uh, the constant is multiplying with the rest of the term so it reminds us there 0 0.004 times 150t minus 3t square when you differentiate term by term 150t becomes 150 then minus 3t square becomes 60 and dv by dt equal to 0 because uh, maximum the word maximum is there so dv by dt equal to 0 uh, that gives 150 minus 60 equal to 0 that gives 60 equal to 150 so t is equal to 25 t equal to 25 seconds so therefore the maximum velocity is so the word maximum and minimum uh, relates to uh, the first derivative is equating to 0 that's the maximum at the stationary points are the uh, by using the second derivative test when you equate first derivative 0 that gives maximum maximum value or the minimum value that's why we equated the first derivative of velocity to 0 and we got the t equal to 25 so this value of t corresponds to the maximum velocity so substitute this value of t in the velocity expression so v is equal to 0 0.004 times 150 times t becomes uh, 25 and minus 3 t square becomes 3 times 25 square so when you simplify you get velocity the maximum velocity is 7.5 meters per second and question number 5 a railway engine of mass 75,000 kilogram is moving up a straight hill inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal 
where sin alpha is equal to 0.01. The engine is traveling at a constant speed of 30 meters per second. The engine is working at uh, 9000, sorry, 960 kilowatt. So that is a constant force resisting the motion of the engine. So find the resistance force. So driving force is equal to power of the engine divided by velocity and given the power is 960 thousands over the velocity is the speed is uh, 30 that's also given so substitute the values for power and V you get the driving force DF is equal to 32,000 newtons now applying the Newton second law F is equal to mass times acceleration what are the component of the forces one is the driving force going upwards and uh, FR the resistance force the motion of uh, the force which is resisting the motion of the engine uh, it's a constant force uh, we have which we have to find out so that is FR in the opposite direction of the driving force and mg sin theta that is the uh, weight due to uh, the force due to weight acting always down the slope so these are the three uh, component of the forces so driving force minus resistance force minus mg sin theta because the resistance force and the force component acting in the opposite direction to the driving force equal to zero <coughs> and uh, that is substitute for uh, the driving force we found 32,000 minus F for the resistance force which we need to find and M is uh, 75,000 G is 10 and sin alpha is given 0 0.01 so that uh, is uh, when you simplify F R is equal to move this negative F R to right side so F R is equal to 3,000 uh, sorry 32,000 minus uh, when you simplify this uh, second term 75,000 times 10 times 0 0.01 you get 7,500 so when you simplify you get FR is equal to 24,500 that is the resistance force is 24,500 newtons and B part the engine comes to a section of the track which is horizontal at the start of the section the engine is traveling at 30 meters per second and the power of the engine is now reduced to 900,000 watts the resistance to motion is no longer constant and but in the next 60 seconds the work done against the resistance force is 46,500 kilojoules it's given find the speed of the engine at the end of 60 seconds so that's a question so work done by the engine in 60 seconds is given by power times time power times time so that's the formula to find uh, uh, work done so using that we get power is given now is reduced to 900,000 so 900,000 times time is 60 seconds so that gives work done by the engine in 60 seconds is 5454 million and now kinetic energy initial kinetic energy is given by half mv square that is initial speed is 30 meters per second given so that you give half m is 75,000 kilograms so times v is 30 so v square become 30 square and kinetic energy final is we need to find uh, the final speed actually so that let us take v so half times m times v square so work done by the engine is equal to now energy principle is gives you work done by the engine is given by change in kinetic energy plus work done against resistance so work done by the engine we have calculated 54 million equal to one change in kinetic energy is half m v square minus u square that gives one of half times 75,000 times v square minus 30 square plus work done against resistance it is given in the question work done is the first 60 seconds is 46,500 kilo joules so 46,500 kilo that is thousands again uh, kilo uh, joules substitute so that value here so the only unknown is v here so rearrange the terms 
you keep this term on the right side and move this to left side last term you get uh, 54 million times uh, sorry uh, minus four six uh, four hundred and sixty five hundred thousands four six five zero zero and zero 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 so v square minus 30 square is 900 is equal to 7500 thousands minus 37500 sorry division over not minus sorry so 7500 thousands over 37500 that is v square minus 900 so that gives v square minus 900 is equal to 200 therefore v square equal to move this minus 900 to the right side becomes plus so 1100 therefore v is under root 1100 gives 33.166 so correcting to three significant figures you get to velocity the final speed is 33.2 meters per second and question number six a block of mass 5 kilogram is held in equilibrium near a vertical wall by two light strings and a horizontal force of magnitude x newtons as shown the diagram got the diagram the two strings are both inclined at 60 degrees to the vertical so given that x equal to 100 find the tension in the lower string so this is the lower string and this is upper string so resolving horizontally so you have redrawn a diagram this is actually 5 kilograms bar and look at that uh, the upper string the tension in the upper string makes an angle 60 with the vertical by the geometry it's alternate angles so this is also the lower string also makes an angle 60 with the vertical and now resolving the forces horizontally uh, taking this uh, the x newtons as a positive direction given x is 100 here so 100 minus the first upper string the tension the upper string gives tu times cos 30 cos 30 or you can say uh, sine 60 let us take because this becomes 30 degrees and this is also 30 degrees so tu the upper string tension the upper string the component horizontally gives you tu u for upper so tu cos 30 minus the tension in the lower string has a horizontal component tl cos 30 so substitute for cos 30 it is the value is root 3 over 2 so you get 100 minus tu times root 3 over 2 minus tl times root 3 over 2 equal to 0 so um, multiply by 2 over root 3 throughout and rearrange the terms you get tu plus tl equal to 200 over root 3 equation 1 now resolving vertically you get uh, w take uh, uh, w as uh, the positive direction downwards as a positive direction you get um, w plus tl this tl the tension the lower string acts downwards when you move this way it acts downwards the component uh, vertically minus this up uh, the upper string tension the upper string the component of the tension the upper string vertically moves uh, direction is upwards so that is a minus sign so tu cos 60 equal to 0 a substitute for cos 60 equal to 1 over 2 so 50 weight is given 50 because m is 5 so mg weight equal to mg that's 50 plus tl times 1 over 2 minus tu times 1 over 2 equal to 0 and uh, we can rearrange the terms so move this tl half tl and half tu, tu to the right side you get tu minus half tl half times tu minus half times tl equal to 50 so multiply throughout by 2 you get tu minus tl equal to 100 now then this is the equation as 2 now solving 1 and 2 the first equation is tu plus tl equal to 200 over root 3 
second equation is Tu minus Tl equal to 100. So just add these two equations, you get 2 times Tu, the tens in the upper string, is equal to 200 over root 3 plus 100. So that when you simplify, the decimal equivalent of Tu is 107.74 newtons. Now to find Tl, make use of the second equation, Tl equal to Tu minus 100, the substitute for Tu, 107.74 and minus 100 gives 7.74 newtons. So tens in the lower string is 7.74, that's what we need to find. So tens in the lower string Tl is 7.74 newtons. Now find the least value of x for which the block remains in equilibrium in the position shown. So let us make an assume, I mean that is uh, assumption. So let Tl equal to 0, let the tension in the lower string be 0 and resolving horizontally now x minus only uh, tension the other forces of so the tension only in the upper string so tu my uh, times cos 30 equal to 0 resolving horizontally you get this name this as equation 1 and resolving vertically tu cos 60 that is moving up minus w that is uh, 50 equal to 0 so name this as 2 now resolving perpendicular to tu so that is another direction resolving perpendicular to Tu, you get um, x makes an angle 60 with that perpendicular, look at the diagram here, makes an angle 60. So x cos 60 minus this weight makes an angle 30 with that uh, perpendicular, so you get to minus 50 cos 30 equal to 0. Now from 2, Tu cos 60 is 1 over 2, substitute for cos 60, so Tu times 1 over 2 equal to 50, that gives T equal to 100. And from 1, you get x is equal to, substitute this value of Tu, you get um, x is equal to 100 times cos 30, that gives 100 times root 3 over 2, cos 30 is root 3 over 2, that gives x is equal to 86.6 newtons. So you can use uh, any one of these, uh, two of these three equations, we used 1 and 2. Uh, to find the value of uh, x. First we found Tu and then we substituted in uh, 1 to get value of x. So that's the least value of x for which the system remain, the block remains in equilibrium. So x is 86.6 newtons. And question number 7. The particles, look at the diagram, there are two particles P and Q have masses m kilograms and 2 m kilograms respectively. The particles are initially held at rest 6 meters apart on the same line of greatest slope of the rough plane inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal. So the both the particles are 6.4 meters apart and along the plane which is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal where sin alpha is given 0 0.8. So particle P is released from rest so initially it is at rest so U is 0 and slides down the line of greatest slope. Simultaneously, the particle Q is projected up the same line of uh, greatest slope at a speed of 10 meters per second. So initial speed of Q projected upwards is 10 meters per second. The coefficient of friction between each particle and the plane is 0.6. So it's also, mu is also given. Show that the acceleration Q up the plane is negative 11.6 meters per second square. So we need to find the acceleration of Q up the plane. So write down the given quantities. Sin alpha is given 0 0.8. So which gives cos alpha by using uh, the uh, relation identity cos square plus sin square is equal to 1. You get cos alpha is equal to under root 1 minus sin square alpha. That is equal to cos alpha is root 0.6. So find that. Now for particle Q applying Newton's second law that is F equal to mass times acceleration. Uh, look at the uh, diagram here. Uh, so force equal to mass times acceleration. What are the components of the force here? One is for the particle Q. The weight component which acts down the slope and along the slope is m 
mg cos al uh, sin alpha where m is 2m here therefore you get um, uh, 2mg sin alpha so let us take the upward direction of the positive since it acts downwards it's a negative sign so minus 2mg sin alpha minus fr again the uh, resistance force or the frictional force acts downwards because the particle q is projected upwards so the resistance is opposite to that uh, direction therefore there is a minus sign minus uh, fr is equal to 2 times m the mass is 2m so 2m times a so that uh, gives so minus uh, 20 times 0 0.8 times m minus mu r so f r is given by we know the relation between the force and uh, mu r this is the relation so now the frictional force is given by mu times the normal contact force and look at the diagram here so the force the weight component which acts perpendicular slope downwards is 2 mg, mg cos alpha here m is 2 m so 2 mg cos alpha and normal contact force is just opposite to that with the same magnitude so that is uh, therefore you replace fr by mu r it gives uh, 0 0.6 times that is mu value and r is 2 mg cos alpha equal to 2 m times a and uh, so that gives 16, negative 16m minus 0. Point, uh, minus 16m minus 0. 0.6 times g is 10 yeah, 2g that becomes 20 cos alpha is 0. 0.6 we have just found the beginning substitute that value and m is there we need to find the m also so equal to 2m times a but when you simplify look at that m is there in all the terms so divide throughout by m you can cancel m get cancelled so you get uh, negative 16 minus 7.2 equal to 2a so that gives a is equal to negative 23.2 over 2 equal to negative 11.6 so a is negative 11.6 meters per second square so we have shown that and b part find the time for which the particles are in motion before they collide so time for which the particles are in motion before they collide so for p for the particle p applying newton's second law force equal to mass times acceleration the force components are for p p is moving down and so the weight component is it's always moving downwards down the slope so it becomes positive so mg sin alpha but friction force always acts opposite the motion of the particle therefore minus fr it acts upwards so minus fr equal to m times a so particle p is coming down therefore fr is moving up the force acts opposite to the motion of the particle and fr is replaced by mu times r mu is the coefficient of friction and r is the normal contact force so substitute value for m and g m we don't know y uh, m is m only m mass is m kilograms given so g is 10 sin alpha is given 0 0.8 mu is given 0 0.6 and r is given by mg cos alpha equal to m times a so next step 8 m equal uh, minus 0 0.6 times this 10 g is 10 so 10 m times cos alpha is 0 0.6 equal to m a that gives 8 m minus 3.6 m equal to m a now we can cancel m on because dividing by m on both sides you get m get cancelled so you get 8 minus 3.6 equal to a therefore acceleration is 4.4 meters per second square that is um, acceleration of the particle p now q comes to rest when 10 minus v equal to that is uh, comes to rest means v equal to 0 using one of the swat equations v equal to u plus a t uh, we have um, 10 because q is projected with a speed of uh, 10 meters per second initially so u is 10 minus acceleration of q we have found that is minus 11.6 so 
a becomes minus 11.6 and t we don't know let be t1 so but q is moving upwards projected with a speed of 10 meters per second and before they collide the particle is coming to rest so uh, the v becomes zero we have found uh, use that so q comes to rest when v equal to zero that v is given by u plus at substitute for u and a you get 10 minus 11.6 times t1 time we have we don't know equal to zero that is q comes to rest when t1 equal to uh, 10 over 11.6 that is 0 0.862 so that's the value of t1 where q comes to rest so distance traveled by p and q during time t1 so uh, we s calculate by using s equal swat equation s equal to ut plus half at square yes p down because p is moving down the slope is given by ut plus half at square u is initially the velocity speed of u is uh, p is zero so u becomes zero plus e, uh, plus half times a times t the time during the time t1 only so t1 square and a uh, substitute uh, for uh, acceleration we found just now the acceleration of the particle p is 4.4 so half times 4.4 times t1 we just found now t1 is 0 0.862 so square this, that gives yes p the distance moved by p down is 1.635 and for the particle q it is going up and in t1 seconds uh, it comes to rest so the distance moved during the t1 is half times uh, 0 point uh, minus the acceleration is negative 11.6 times t is that is t square that is 0 0.862 square that gives 4.31 so that is the distance moved by the particle q uh, up the slope and now the distance but still they didn't collide so the t given initially they are they are 6.4 meters apart so let d be the distance extra distance needed for p to reach q so that is given by d equal to <coughs> initially they are 6.4 meters apart so 6.4 minus the distance traveled by the particle p downwards minus the distance moved uh, upwards by the particle q so those things given by 6.4 minus 1.635 minus 4.31 that gives 0 0.455 now this is a distance uh, which is needed um, for both the particles to collide still because q already comes rest but p is still in motion okay so q comes to rest after t1 seconds and moves in opposite direction now after coming to rest it's a slope so q tends to move downwards uh, with the acceleration 4.4 meters per second square so let t2 be the time taken by p and q to collide after t1 seconds so if you keep uh, the instant the starting point after t1 seconds so both the particle moves down the slope and it let t2 be the time taken by them to collide because uh, both the particles are moving down so now d equal to sp minus sq so total distance of mode because this is initially now at the point at that instant the distance between p and q is 4.0.455 uh, meters uh, that is the instant now at that instant from that instant onwards both the particles moves downwards so now let us calculate the dis uh, from that instant let us calculate the distance moved by p and the distance moved by q both are in the same direction downwards so that d is 0 0.455 equal to the distance moved by p down after that is using the swat equation v equal to u plus uh, sorry s equal to ut plus half at square and uh, your u initial velocity at that time is 4.4 t1 because uh, using v equal to u plus at u equal to initially the uh, well, uh, speed of uh, p is 0 and acceleration is 4.4 t1 and so therefore a uh, distance um, moved the time taken for p to reach that instant is t1 
therefore so that gives the that's a, that's the final velocity of the first phase that becomes the initial velocity now because we have taken that as instant uh, where pq comes to rest therefore that u becomes 4.4 t1 times this t2 is the time where from that instant where q comes to rest the both the particles are moving down to collide so that is t2 so it is um, ut plus half at square so 4.4 is acceleration of p times t2 square minus uh, this uh, distance traveled by q is it starts from rest it moves projected with a speed of 10 meters per second and comes to rest from rest it moves down so u is 0 therefore half s equal to ut plus half at square gives just half 4.4 t2 square <coughs> so that gives 0 0.455 is equal to because these two terms get cancelled so 4.4 times t1 times t2 but t1 already we found in previous part that 0 0.862 we have found t1 is 0 0.862 so substitute that value here so t1 is 0 0.862 so that gives t2 is equal to 0 0.455 divided by 4.4 times 0 0.862 that gives 0 0.1199 so that is uh, to three significant figures T2 is 0 0.120. So time taken before collision is T1 plus T2. So that is 0 0.862 plus 0 0.12 that gives 0 0.982. So but in this during this time P always travels downwards. There is no uh, change in its course but Q initially it moves up then after time t1 it comes to rest then for time t2 seconds it comes down so that's why there are two phases for q2 we have divided into two phases so t1 is the first phase time and t2 is the second phase time so adding t1 and t2 you get uh, 0 0.982 seconds and the particles coalesce on impact find the speed of the combined particle immediately after the impact so <coughs> The speed of P down is given by uh, B equal to use uh, the SWAT equation V equal to uh, U plus AT. Initially the speed of P, uh, P moves from rest so P U is 0 plus acceleration is 4.4 and time before collision just before collision is 0 0.982 we found in part B just now so substitute that time you get 4.3208 that is the uh, uh, final velocity uh, of uh, P and UQ that is just before the collision the speed of U just before collision is 4.3208 and u q down that is <coughs> speed of q just before collision is given by 4.4 times 0 0.12 that gives uh, 0 0.528 so let v be the velocity of p and q after impact so now we have found the speed or the velocity of uh, the speed of the particles p and q before impact and now let V be the velocity of the particle because after impact they coalesce so therefore their speeds are same. So P and Q after impact. So applying law of conservation of momentum, the total momentum before collision equal to total momentum after collision. So now you have substitute M, the mass of the particle M, P is M times its velocity is uh, P is 4.3208. And the mass of the particle Q is 2m and its speed before collision is 0 0.528. And then after impact, the speed is the same. Therefore, you just add the masses and multiply the speed. That is m plus 2m times v. So in this equation, you have uh, some when you simplify, you get 5.3768m equal to 3mv. Now m and m get cancelled you get to v equal to 5.3768 over 3 that gives uh, the speed after impact the combined particle speed after impact is 1.79 meters per second